Oh snap, I came outside right on time as the FedEx truck pulled up for two pallets worth of stuff for me. super hot I'm like super sweaty from moving the tires I will say it's probably my workout for the week um, anyway tire street also sent this box along with the tires let's figure out what's all in here and then after that I'll show you guys the tires and basically what my plans are for those tires because at this moment you guys have no idea what I'm doing um, I haven't told anybody about this and so it's gonna be a surprise for you guys uh, cool, it looks like we got some merch here. Nice. Nice. We got a snapback hat. And got another black t-shirt. I have way too many black shirts. Team Tire Streets. Nice. It's actually really similar to my Hot Shot shirt. And this also goes along with the theme of the FIP build. So perfect. And then we have a little thank you letter. A little sticker. And a little like pamphlet. Let me go ahead and show you guys the two sets of tires. Obviously, you can tell this one's a little bit bigger. This right here, we have a 381550 R20 Armstrong Desert Hog MT. Look how aggressive that looks. I honestly like the pictures do not do justice on how good these tires look. Look at that. And then look at the Furies, which I've really grown to like the sidewall of the Furies. I found out that Amp is making 38, 15, 50, 24 for my truck. And for those of you guys that know me already, I love these Amp tires. And to be honest with you guys, those Fury tires are smooth, but it does bounce a little bit at certain speed and certain roads, which I am not a huge fan of. And I guarantee you it is those tires because Mark had them on his truck first and they did the exact same thing. And I am not the only person that's experienced. Jimmy with the Ram, he's got 40s. Here's a 2020 or 2021 Ram 2500. Installed about 25 of JW Motorsports Co Rock lights as well as the quad row wheel lights. And his truck does the exact same thing as well. So I am pinpointing down to the fact that it's those Fury tires. It's just the nature of those tires, I would say. I've always been very pleased with Amp tires, although I've heard it's kind of a hit or miss with these two. But hey, two sets of Amp tires that I've had were perfect, so can't go wrong with them. But only thing is, I love the sidewall, but I have really grown to like the sidewall of these Furies. So at this point, it's like, do I even want to switch over to Amp because I've really grown to like the Furies. So I think I'm just going to stick to Furies on the L5P, especially since we have these bad boys over here. You're probably wondering, JW, what are you doing? You got 20s, you got the wrong size. You know, obviously my hostile wheels are 24s. How are we going to put 24s in here? Well, all right, let's see how many of you guys actually knew that I have a set of factory AT4 wheels that I got from the previous owner, been sitting in my garage, and then I put it over into the trailer. So yeah, I'm super excited because the AT4 wheels, it's mostly black, and a little bit of the milling, I think it's gonna look really good. That's probably going to be one of the biggest Bubba 2020 Duramax out there. I haven't really seen anybody with a nine inch lift running stock wheels with 38s. That is exciting, you guys. So let's go ahead and put it next to the truck and see how that's gonna look. Wow, check that out. Stocks next to the truck. I might have to maybe peel the AT4 and that up there just to give it a little bit more contrast so that way the milling can kind of fit in with the flow of the truck. 
but I think for like my new daily look yeah this is what I'm doing stocks and 38 a lot of you guys don't know this but I just turned 27 last week on the 21st of June yeah now I look 17 but I'm 27 which is why I think a lot of people are confused that I have I guess in a way like an expensive truck because they're probably thinking like how is this 17 year old affording a new truck like this but I'm almost 30. Hate to say it, but yeah, I'm almost 30. I think I've matured. I love the aftermarket and the stance look, but at the same time, I've really grown to appreciate the Bubba look as well. The wheel's about to roll. So, with that being said, I've always wanted to try the Bubba look. This is actually what I wanted to do before I put the McGoy's lift kit on, but shoot, now that I got a nine inch lift, I'm putting the stocks and 38s. I really could have gone with 40s, but armstrong tires did not make 40s but 38s i know for a fact with two inch wheel spacers all the way around i'll be clearing these tires no problem uh, i know i rub a little bit at the moment right now so this is going to be perfect for my daily setup also if you're watching this right now please make sure to hit that subscribe button right now our goal for this year is to hit 100,000 subscribers and we're only 30,000 away so every click helps and I would really appreciate it if you guys would subscribe because look, we got plenty of content coming. Also with the LOI, I'm gonna completely redo it. I think with the L5P, we've uh, kind of hit the peak. So with that being said, LOI needs to be completely redone. These trucks are harder to come by. I want this to be probably one of the nicest looking classic bodies out there. So the tow mirrors gotta be redone because there's some imperfections and flaws. The bumper definitely needs to be redone just because of all the scuffs and scratches that we have. It came like this. Also, when I was doing my turbo and all the piping uh, with the stool, it scratched the crap out of the bumper up front. So we got to do a new bumper. Also, the grill is some of the tabs are broken and the chrome is peeling. Can't have that. So we're going to get all new grill headlights i'm probably going to build a custom set of headlights something different i definitely want to do something with demon eyes just because this truck is red and it's so aggressive i think demon eyes would accent it perfectly i've done demon eyes in the past and i've kind of grown out of it but just for this truck i'm going to do demon eyes just because i think it'll look rick with it and then we're going to be powder coating a couple of the components on here we're going to powder coat the hitch powder coat the suspension and I gotta get new lower control arms and all that good jazz. So we got plenty of stuff coming up for this. This is going to be our next build coming up. But let's go ahead and show you guys the 37s. Man, the 37s compared to the 38s, that's a huge difference mainly because the width. These are 1550s and these are only 1250s. So yeah, if you look, we have 37, 1250, or 20. So this is going to be for another set of stock wheels. And here's where we are right now. Originally, I got these 37s for my dad's 2021 Denali build, which we're putting my old Rough Country five inch lift kit on that truck. He's not a huge fan of loud tires, so he doesn't really wanna do MT. So he's looking at like hybrid tires, or he's also even looking at different mud tires because these can be a little bit noisy and I don't know if he's gonna like it. I really want him to put these on though, just because I think these tires look really good. Uh, look how aggressive they look and um the tread pattern looks really awesome as well and i think that's one thing he, he's kind of skeptical about like he doesn't want that aggressive look we're gonna see if we can convince him if not i'll be looking for some stock wheels for the loi and <laughs> we're gonna have two bubba trucks i know a couple of guys that have the 2020 and 2021 denali's i might get those stocks and put 37s, crank the keys up a little bit because right now it's sitting at like four, even lower than that. I mean, I probably got, yeah, I mean, I got two, three inches to go up safely. Um, and then we'll put some bigger blocks in the rear and set it at six inches. And then we can clear 37s. These are stupid, stupid wide. Once I get the AC fixed, winter time comes along. This is going to be my daily driver. And especially since I'm, I'm probably gonna do a different turbo on this too, just for a comparison and stuff like that. This is definitely gonna be my daily driver if I had some stocks and uh, not something that sticks out so much. And also, I kinda like the bubble look on these. So leave a comment below what you guys think. Shoot, I'm gonna need a bigger garage. Holy cow, I barely have enough room to walk through here. 
We got Donnie's old set of 22 by 14 anthems on 37 by 1350 amp all-terrain tires or amp attack tires. So these are actually available. These are for sale. It is 8 by 180 so it works for your 2011 and newer 2500s uh, GMC Chevy 2500. So if you are in the market, shoot me a DM. Probably won't be shipping them. So if you want to pick them up, if you're a local, if you want to pick them up for your Duramax, send me a message. We'll cut you a deal. Uh, we're probably asking about 16, 1700 bucks for wheels and tires. Already balanced and these are in like perfect condition. So shoot me a DM if you are interested. And as always, make sure to go check out jwmoresportsco.com to get your merch. And we're about to have some wheel lights back in stock. So give us about a week and we should have a couple in stock ready to ship out to you guys. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting. All the LEDs are done. Now we just gotta make the brackets and everything. So give us about a week or two and we'll have it done for you guys. And also, as soon as they go live, make sure to get yours because they are gonna sell out quick. I have a feeling they'll sell, sell out in like two days. So be on your toes. Wow, look at all these tires. go the rings are powder coated black let me show everybody how they come oh you got jared's u-bolts powder coated yep. oh heck yeah dirty white dirty hey, white if i order them on jwmotorsportscode.com can i ask for special powder coating no you can't no. not right now we thought about we it we thought right about now. it but the amount of manpower goes into it like alex is already like kind of look at me overwhelmed as is we might kill him if we add any more options yeah so this is how they come like this but if you're local also like if you're friends with us Alex does offer the powder coat option in-house but locals only but yeah this is how they come I mean nothing wrong with it it's just some people want to take the take the bill to the next level aka this guy take it to SEMA you got the wallet. <laughs> you got, you got yeah. the powder. We'll just have to figure it out. I mean, yeah. right now our demand. You got to think about all the different colors people want. Exactly. Maybe if we do just. We might just do black. Colors. Yeah, black, white. Black, white, red. But yeah, this is how they come. We might just leave us leave a comment below if you think we should do like a powder coat option for an extra hundred bucks. So leave a comment below a if you think do a powder yeah, coat we'll option, do. and we'll, uh, we'll think about it. I hold it like. Up like that. Okay. See what you just did, you put it in there. Yep, and then let it keep letting heat up. Take it away from the heat. Alright, you let go. That's it? That's the best connection you ever have. Wow. It dries that fast. Let's see watch. Watch it. You pull the wire out of the loom. Yeah. Wow. I was hoping for it to just slip out. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be like, watch this and it slips out. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> we gotta redo that, redo that. <laughs> Take number two. <laughs> How'd you have it before? Just clamped it? Uh, yeah. The, the original one that's on there is yeah. probably just clamped on there. First time you did it, the bed was off. It's much easier to do any type of wiring with it. Mm-hmm. 
and especially being at a shop with the lift and everything. I was more intricate with it, and I think I made it a little bit more complicated, because mm. had I done it with the bed on, you're yeah. kind of like, oh, we're just gonna go this way. But because I had the bed off, I could take the time to route it properly, and I tried to follow the factory wiring as much as possible. Today, Alex is gonna show you guys exactly how to install JW Motorsports Co. wheel lights. All right, so in your kit, you're gonna have a ring, 12 brackets, so you're gonna have three per wheel, roughly. You would think you'd want four, but if you think about it, if you place four around the cal around the rotor, um, caliper's gonna be in the way. So I usually do one on top, one on bottom, and one on the side, opposite of the caliper. The kit's gonna come with self-tapping screws, and that'll what will mount the bracket to the dust shield. In this case, we're using rivets. I prefer rivets for a cleaner look, but I don't expect everybody to have a rivet gun. That's why we send out self-tappers. And then to mount the bracket to the ring, there will be a bolt, a nut, and a self-locking washer. And that's what you'll use to mount the bracket to the ring. But to get it started, what you wanna do is I usually mount one bracket to the ring anywhere on the ring. So you're gonna put the ring over the rotor. With this truck, it pretty much centers it perfectly by itself. It's, just a, it's 2,500, but 1,500 guys, your rotor's gonna be, or your whole set's gonna be a little bit smaller, so you might have to adjust it to where it's centered so that's where it helps to have two people but in this case you will only have one you just got to figure out the best place to put it and rotate it around some so the 1500s you have technically more room to play with but also more room for air more room for air for it to be offset off centered mm -hmm. also with matt's truck right he's got this nice air setup so Air's i can't get a drill back here mm -mm. but luckily with the dust shield and the rotor i have a little gap so right here, it's gonna be pretty much centered. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be a very minimal gap going around the whole ring. So if you're using self-tapper, what you would do is self-tap this one, this first one, bracket into the dust shield. But I'm gonna drill through the dust shield and put a rivet in. And I always do the rivets from the back side, and I would suggest doing the self tapper from the back side too. There you go. So there's the first brackets on. You see, it's going to have a little bit of wiggle. You don't want it completely touching the caliper, and you don't want it completely touching the other side. So try and center it the best you can and grab another bracket. So on the underside, that's what you have. So you'll get the bracket. Get the bracket, <laughs> set it on here, set it where you want it on the dust shield. So for my case, I'm gonna put it right here. And then you're gonna push it out, drill the hole through the ring that will match the hole on your bracket. Mount the bracket with the supplied bolt, nut, and lock washer to the ring. And then after that's mounted, then you'll do it to the dust shield. Got the bracket mounted to the caliper, I mean to the dust shield and to the ring. So you can see the rivet going into the bracket. Don't want to put it on the caliper. And then the rivet going into the dust shield. So right now we have two, and this thing's already really sturdy. Third one's gonna go right here. So you have one top, bottom, and then this side, then on the opposite side is gonna be your caliper. So those three mounting points will be your anchor points. And then next we'll put the LEDs around the strip. Got the third bracket on. All right, let's show everybody just how sturdy that thing is. Look at that, that ain't going nowhere. It's shaking the whole truck. It'll come supplied with some of these clear zip ties. That's right, so this is exactly how it'll come. I mean, all the work will be done. And now a lot of people like are confused about that end. Where, which is the, uh, where's the one that you plug in? That's over there. But yeah. okay. it'll be a push-in connector that screws on. That is what you have to wire up to your, the rest of your circuit. You could tap into your rock lights. You could, if you're only doing wheel lights, you have to run a wire around the whole truck connecting to each one. But what this is, is just a quick connect. So if you ever need to take these off, you can take them off without having to cut your wires. Exactly. But what I like to do, so I figure out where I'm gonna run these, this wire at, which I'm gonna run along the brake cable right here. So I try and do the beginning of the wire over here by the brake line, right, right here. All right. And so I start the zip tie, the first one, on the beginning of the LEDs, right where the heat shrink ends. So both LEDs sit side by side on top of the bracket, on top of the ring. 
So people may be wondering, the brackets, we don't drill any holes. You're gonna have to drill the holes to attach the brackets to the, well, the brackets will have the holes, but you're gonna have to drill holes on the ring. Because every truck's gonna be different. That's mm -hmm. why we don't pre-drill the rings because every truck's different. Even the same truck, you could be, you could mount it differently. Exactly. And so then- We, we kind of give you the freedom. I just put one, two, three, four, five zip ties total. I think I send 25 zip ties out, so that'll mm -hmm. be enough for a nuclear reaction with a flux capacitor carry the two changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider yeah five rings but you only have four so yeah. we have some left over pull the leds snug so that there's no play in them they won't hang over the edge for example i got the zip tie on there loosely make sure it's around the ring good then pull it tight then zip tie it down so it's nice and snug on there and, and it's keep. optional if you guys want to you could go buy double-sided tape yep and and tape it but we kind of give you the freedom of however you want to customize these. On my first set that I built for my truck, I did double side tape mm -hmm. and zip ties because I didn't trust the tape alone. Put your last zip tie or second to last zip tie on. I loop up like this. So to get those together, use one more zip tie and go over the top of the wires and over the end of the LED strips. And that'll pretty much tie them all together. So it's nice and snug. Even though you won't have light emitting from this, what, two, two and a half inches, these quad rows are bright enough oh, that you will sure. never even see that gap. Mm -hmm. You only gotta do is trim off the excess of the zip ties and then run your wires and then it'll be lighting up the night. All right, two done, two more to go. And then luckily Matt's already got rock lights. So all we have to do is tap tap into his rock lights and um, mm -hmm. should be good. Unless if you want a separate circuit for your wheel lights only, but. Well, who's gonna run just wheel lights yeah. or just rock lights? Most of the time, yeah, people usually just do one circuit, one button. Just ran into a little, not an issue, but a little headache is um, in the rear of the 2020, at least for GMC, I'm not so sure about Chevy's, I would assume it'd be the same way. If you remove the wheel well liner, you have to pretty much remove the fender flares because these tuck in between the fender flares and the body. So it took about, what, 15, 20 minutes extra because we had to pop flares out. The process broke a couple of the clips. Luckily, Matt's got a spare bag full of clip. Right now, what he's doing is tapping the wheel lights to the rock light wires that give power to this wheel well. Coming down. Did we finish the other side? Yeah. Not yet. All right. Mondo's and uh, um, Mondo. Mondo's with the polish. The way the polish, wait, wait, yeah. it highlights on the, the way it shines on the polish. I was like, yeah, it's time to, it's time to finally pull the trigger. I Not, just I'm holding on to the money in my bank account. Go ahead and give it to JW. <laughs> I got them just because I make them. That's right. I need to put them on. I was supposed to put them on before they tone them, but yeah, we had so like, much. I don't know if I'm gonna run them. I'm like, it's your, it's your company. You gotta run. Them. I do. Why don't you run them, dude? I need to. We'll I was do the it. same way. I didn't like them. I thought they were tacky. Yeah. I was like, that's eh, too tacky. I'm just gonna run rock lights. But Camera. then I wanted to highlight the mm -hmm. camera. It's on. RGB ones are tacky. <laughs> I agree with you. And I, I couldn't find a set of true white ones, so that's why I just held off. And then finally, JW created some, and I was like, JW. Oh, cool. Alex. Alex created some. Okay, Alex created some. My bad. Partnered up with JW. Partnered up with JW. Alex created them. Partnered up with JW for the distro. Sells. Here we go. If it was just me selling, I'd probably only sell two cents. Maybe four. Maybe four. <laughs> Local. <laughs> Local. We would all bought them, but now they're shipping nationally. Yeah, like someone out to what Minnesota? You said. Yeah, we went to. I mean, Minnesota. Louisiana, that one. So. Really? Yeah. You guys yeah, talking to me about it? Yeah, twenty sets on the way. We got twenty sets on the way to build it. Donnie was talking about how he wishes he was here, then we would have knocked him out in one night. Oh yeah. Just having three people doing an assembly line. Yeah, we got the rears finished. Look at that. Look how bright that is, even in the daylight. You can even see it highlighting on the rim during the day. Right? That's quality. And we bench tested them. what really made me, um, cause I think I had already gave you the money. But yeah. then the whole way back from Daytona, I was, it was either Mondo, me and Mondo were kind of leapfrogging behind you like mm -hmm. the whole way back. 
And every time he'd be in front of me, I see this wheel. Like, like I could, I could fall back and still see him up the road a mile or. That's two how you spot life. him. I was like, you can see his wheel lights because Natalia was sitting in front of me. She was like, Daddy, they they're all leaving you. All your truck friends are leaving you. And I was like, Nah, man. You see them lights up there? I see I them. That, there goes Mondo right there. She was like, No, uh. I was like, Yes, that's his truck. We we're on the way home from Atlanta. It was like one or two in the morning. It was yeah. just me, JW, and Cam on the interstate. And Cam, we we're on a group call, and Cam said, "Cause I was." Cam was going like 65 or 70. I'm running 80. We were, I was a good way ahead of him. He's like, bro, you're lighting up like 12 feet of each side of the truck, yeah. each side of the lanes. That's how that's how I can actually like keep an eye on you guys whenever we're traveling. It's Just the wheel the lights. lights. Yeah. Mondo's really shine because he's got yeah. deep offset. Yeah. So you see his. We got 16s with two inch spacers. Yeah. So you see you his. You see lights. the rows on each front and back. You can see all his lights. You see his wheel lights. They're not even like no they're, wheel. They're, they're not wheel lights anymore. They're rotor lights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so just rinse and repeat in the front. I'm gonna put the camera down so I can help Alex center up the wheel light. Okay. Center it up. Yeah, you got to push it now. Right there. What were you saying? Besides it's hot. hot. So the front's usually a little bit more difficult to mount because it's more involved with the knuckle and everything compared to the back. So the brackets are usually three inches long um, just to give you flexibility for mounting. But this one to fit it back up in this knuckle, I had to cut it a little bit shorter so you may have to cut it. Uh, what I recommend if you don't is like a band saw or a porta band is what we use. Um, you could use a Saw, saw, I hope, yeah, or a side grinder. So we mounted one here, there, and the third one right there. Last wheel light, and then we get to see how bright it is tonight. Look how easy that is. Just twist on, and then just tap into your existing rock light wires or whatever. Super simple. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>